Hello, I'm glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. I do have a longer video for you today, but I tried to put a lot of ideas into it, so I hope it's worth watching. Today is one of those videos that I don't do very often in which I'm using a specific die set. The reason I decided to do this today is because this die set creates an interactive card unlike anything I've seen. I think it's brilliant, and I think the price point is pretty good because there are so many ways you can use it. And I think the different cards that I create show that it can be done with a bunch of different style cards. All right, now also at the end of this video, I have some stitch cards for you because Lawn Fawn just came out with some really simple stitching dies. So we'll cover that at the end. But for now, let's do this interactive card. And I think it's best to look at a completed card before we get started. Watch as I pull the tab on the bottom. That element on the top kind of pops up and flips a little bit towards you, revealing what's underneath. And I just think this is such a unique way to create a fun interactive element on your card. It stands up nicely on display, has a lot of dimension to it, but does flatten nicely to go into an envelope. I will first demonstrate with this card and then I'll do two additional ones that are very different. Now the magical die set that creates this fun interactive feature is the Lawn Fawn Pull and Pop Pull Tab Die Set. Now I usually try to do interactive techniques that don't require specialty set, but sometimes a die set comes along that I really think is worth sharing because it can be used in many ways, and this is definitely one of those. So you have the big pull tab die that's in my right hand, and then a smaller one that goes along it to give it a decorative look at the end. I'll demonstrate all of this. Then you have this die that creates the slits in the front of your card. This die will create a little notch for your pull tab. And then the final die creates a support for it. All right, let's get started. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece here. Whatever size card you want to make is the size panel you need. You can make a taller card or bigger card if you prefer. Now I'm drawing a pencil line down the center of this. You could totally skip this if you wanted to and just eyeball it, but I find it helpful, so I tend to do it using a T-ruler. I will then use the slit die. You'll notice that the slit die has a little arrow at the bottom. That doesn't cut, it just is letting you know what orientation to put it in, and you're putting it so that little arrow on the die points towards you. And I'm lining up that little arrow hole along that pencil line, trying to get it as straight as possible. You can put this anywhere on the card front. I did a little bit towards the top center. Next, you'll need to cut a piece of cardstock from the tab die. And you'll notice that this die creates two score lines, one along that long T line and one at the top. Now along this T line here, you'll see that score lines right down the middle. It's best to fold it up against something straight to get that fold line started. I learned this trick from Kelly over at Lawn Fawn. You just kind of press it there, see how the fold is started, and then you can press down with your fingers and use a bone folder reinforce. I will call these little arms sticking out the long arms there, and now you can see that the long arms have a fold line right down the center. Now remember there is another score line towards the top of the tab. We're going to fold that away from ourselves, reinforcing that fold line too. By the way, I recommend cutting all of these pieces from a strong heavy weight cardstock. I always recommend that when doing interactive cards so that they really work their best. So we have these two pieces so far. We're going to flip both of them over. Just so you know that I flipped them over, I'm putting an X on the back of them. You don't have to do that, but I just really want to point out that we're looking at the back side of these two pieces. Now I'm taking the long part of the tab and sliding it through the bottom slit on my background. And then this little flap on the top, I'm sliding through the top flap. Now you notice there's the long arms and the short arms. I'm putting the short arms through that slit in the top. You can kind of wiggle it through. So now the long arms are on the back side of our panel and the short arms you can see there are on the front side of our panel. This is what allows us to have that fun pop-up effect. Next we will add the support piece. So that's that thin die here. You can see it creates two score lines, one on each end of the support. We're going to fold one end away from us and one end towards us. And once again, I'll use the bone folder to reinforce. Now you can skip that if you want to, but I feel that everything interactive works best when you reinforce the fold lines and when you use heavyweight cardstock. 
Now here is the part that it connects everything together. I'm going to start by pressing my tab so those the top of the little arms is right along the top of that top slit. So you can see how those arms are pushed up against the slit there. I will then use some temporary tape to hold it in place. I just find that helpful. So again, those little arms are pressed up against that top slit. Now we'll take that support and we're going to glue it right above that top slit. I do recommend using a very strong adhesive for this. I'm using Gina K Connect Liquid Adhesive, but you could use a double-sided tape if you prefer. I'm putting that strong adhesive right on the bottom of one of these flaps on our support. And then I will place this right on that dot that I drew. I just drew it there so you could better see where I'm landing it. It's right above that top slit. And notice that the little flap is facing towards me. And I've got a little bit of a space there between that little flap and the slit in the card. See that little space there? You could go a little bit closer if you want to, but you don't want to go too much farther away. Now on the other flap, I'll put some strong adhesive. And I will fold this down. Then I'll remove that tape. And remember, there is a flap that I have taped down there. I'm gonna fold that flap up and press that onto the exposed adhesive. So flap to flap, press it down. See, I'm pressing it down there. And then put something heavy on it to give it some time to dry. Now this is really the hardest part of the entire process, but once you create it once, you will definitely be able to do so again and again. And I will demonstrate it again a couple more times in the video. All right, once that has had some time to dry, you can start to see the fun effect here. Don't worry if it seems a little flimsy right now, we have more to add to it. Next, I'll flatten everything down once again and tape it in place. Notice the tab on the bottom is way too long. They make it extra long so you can use the same die set on bigger cards. I'm just gonna trim right along the bottom of the card. You could keep the tab a little longer if you wanted to. I'll demonstrate that later. Next, we need this die that is the decorative tab. Notice it has a little arrow cut. We're gonna glue that on top of our tab in the card. The reason we're doing that is so it has a little arrow and it's stronger. Now, this tab die cut is also too big because they want you to have the option of using it on a bigger card. To figure out how big to cut this, I line the bottom edge there with the bottom of our panel. And then I draw a pencil line that's halfway between the two slits. So right about there, roughly halfway between those two slits. And then we will cut along that pencil line. On the back of that piece, I'm putting liquid adhesive. That way I can wiggle it into place. We'll tuck the cut end into that bottom slit right above the tab that's sticking out from our card panel. So we'll just slide it in there, wiggle it in place, and then make sure the two tab ends line up. And there we have our decorative tab. And it has that little arrow so the person knows where to pull. And as I mentioned before, this also makes that tab stronger. All right, now let's add this to our card. My panel is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I have a note card of the same size. Now it's important to put your adhesive only in certain areas when adding this to your card. Now you're going to put adhesive where I put a pencil line here on the back side, only along the top and the top corners, and only along the bottom and the bottom corners. You want flexibility in that middle area so that your pull tab allows that pop-up feature. So only adhesive along the top, the bottom, and the corners. I recommend something strong like the Gina K Connect liquid adhesive that I'm using here. I like to use liquid adhesive in this case also because I can wiggle it until it's straight on my card. Another good option would be Lawn Fawn double-sided tape. All right, let's give this a test run. We'll pull that tab and you can see the pop-up feature is functioning. We're in the home stretch. We next need to create a panel that will cover up that pull tab. You can put anything on the kind of the bottom half of the card. So I have a piece of cardstock, the same width as our card, four and a quarter inches. And I thought I'd cut the top edge of this with a cloud border die, but you could also cut straight across if you prefer. I'll demonstrate that later. We want this to just cover up the pull tab on the bottom. So the top edge of this piece that we're cutting needs to land between the pull tab slit and the top slit. So you can see I'm laying it right there between the two slits and then putting a pencil mark at the bottom of the card so I know where to cut the excess off. If you want to stamp on this panel, now would be the time, but I'm gonna leave mine plain. 
Now you can see how that will cover up the tab on the bottom, but we do need to cut a notch in the bottom of this piece so that the bottom of the tab is showing. And that's what this little notch die does. I want this to line up with the pull tab. So what I do is I take that white piece we just cut and I put it on the bottom of our card, but I move it up a bit. See how the tab is sticking out a little bit? I'll move it up. Now I'll take the notch die and I will line it up so that the little arrows on the bottom of the notch die, see those little arrows there, line up with the pull tab sticking out the bottom. And then those little arms sticking out on the die, which don't cut, they're just there to help you line it up, those line up with the bottom of that white panel. So you can see the arrows there line up with the pull tab sticking out. And then those arms just line up with the bottom of your white cardstock piece. Again, the only thing that cuts is that little curve at the top, which creates a notch. All right, now let's run this through our die cut machine. There's our little notch. And now we can add this over the card and you can see how the tab sticks out the bottom. So that, that's probably the hardest step of all of them. But if you do decide to try this die set out, just watch the videos and play along. Now we need to add glue on the back of this piece, but I'm only putting it really along the sides and corners. So I put a pencil mark where I'll add it. You'll see in a moment, I end up going and adding more glue in. But for now, I'm putting glue here along those pencil lines, and then I will place it onto my panel, making sure that the tab is sticking out of that notch. It was at this point I decided I needed more glue along the bottom. You don't need any more glue along the top, not necessary, but along the bottom where that notch is. So let me show you. I'm peeling this off carefully. One of the advantages of using a liquid adhesive, you can change your mind as I'm doing here. And I'm adding adhesive along the bottom up to the notch, but not above the notch and not along the top of this piece. So again, the top corners, the sides, and the bottom up to the notch. I will demonstrate this again in my next examples. Sorry that I kind of changed gears here, but I found it was good to have glue all the way up to the sides of the notch so that your tab will stay in the notch as you pull it up and down. So I'm gonna press that all down and then we can give it a test run. And notice that the tab slides in and out nicely and the pop-up feature works. The cool thing now is you can add anything you want onto that little flap there so that it pops up. I thought it'd be fun to do a flower pop-up for my first example, and I'm using an older die set from Lawn Fawn. This is the Magic Iris Sunflower die. Now this is meant to be used with the Magic Iris interactive die set. If you've never seen that before from Lawn Fawn, it's another must-see die set. I will link to the video up here on the top right and at the end of this video. But for my card, I'm just using this as an element to pop up on our pop-up feature. You'll notice that I'm creating more than one flower. That's because whenever I die cut, I usually create extras for extra cards. And in this case, I didn't know if I wanted to use a yellow flower or a pink flower. So I created both and then we'll test it out on our card. I wanted to close that opening in the center, so I found a circle die from my stash that's slightly bigger than the opening, and I'm cutting that from dark brown cardstock, and I'm creating two circles that way. One will get glued on the front of our flower, and one will get glued on the back of our flower. Again, just closing that opening. Now I'm doing a sunflower here, but you could do anything here. It'd be fun to have like a sun pop up, maybe from the clouds on the bottom of your card, lots of things you could do. And then I will add the center of the flower that's cut with that Magic Iris Sunflower die. Now it's time to create some die cut elements to decorate the bottom of our card. I need a stem for my flower and also some grass coming up. For the grass, I'm using another Lawn Fawn die set. This creates a adorable layered daffodil, but I am only using the little leaves as grass on this card. And I thought I was gonna use the stems to form a long stem for my flower, but I decided to cut my own. Notice that I do do a lot of die cutting, just showing this as proof. When I die cut, I just do a lot of extra so I can make other cards in the future. At this point, I decided to go with my yellow sunflower. I'll probably create the same card again with the pink one later on. I want to figure out where to place my uh, little pieces of grass and my stem for the flower. So let's go ahead and attach the flower itself. You put strong adhesive on that little flap there on our mechanism, and then you can place this onto it however you want. I'm kind of centering it towards the top of my card. 
I'll give that a little bit of time to dry, and as it dries, I'm cutting a stem for that flower. I cut an arch on the side of my cardstock, and then I'll cut another arch very close to it to create a stem. I thought this was a nice thickness for this big flower. The other stem die cuts were a little too thin. So I'll put adhesive on this, and I'll make sure the top of the stem is right up against that slit where the mechanism sticks out, and next to the tab on the bottom. That way it looks like it's coming out from the bottom of our card. I then can flip my card over and cut the excess off from that, and I'll save that little stem piece for that extra card I'm doing. Let's test this out and look at how cool that is. Not only does it pop up, it kind of tilts towards you. Now I can add these other pieces to kind of serve as grass. I thought I was gonna add some leaves, but I decided to skip that. I also will use some of these extra leaf die cuts for the inside of our card. Now we need some sentiments. I thought I'd do one on the flower and then one hiding behind the flower. And both of these are from the older Lawn Fawn Window Scene Spring stamp set. I stamp Sending Sunshine onto a white cardstock strip that I'll glue right onto the flower. The Happy Spring I'm cutting in half. It's okay, it'll still work fine. So I can stack the words on the inside. Now I've pulled the tab so my flower pops up. I'm placing this into my stamping tool to stamp that sentiment on the cloud. However, I do recommend instead using an acrylic block. You'll see I'm kind of pushing my flower down. I don't recommend doing that because you don't want to mess with that interactive feature. It turned out com to be completely fine. So you can do this if you want, but I think it would probably be best to use an acrylic block instead. So I stamped happy and underneath it I'll stamp spring and this will be hidden when the flower is flattened, when the tab is pushed in, and then it'll be revealed when you pull on the tab. So here's the completed card. It flattens nicely to fit into an envelope. When you pull the tab on the bottom, the flower pops up and kind of turns towards you, revealing the sentiment underneath. So you could put anything under there you want. Maybe put a little stamped critter or maybe a butterfly or something, maybe a little bee. But I decided to stick with a pretty simple design to keep the focus on that pop-up feature. I did add some gold glittered uh, gemstones from Studio Katia onto the flower for a bit of sparkle. I have those linked below too. Notice this stands up nicely on display and in a natural state, it does pop up on its own a bit for some added dimension. But then when you pull the tab, it really pops up for that added fun. This kind of interactive die set works with a lot of different things. So I used an older flower die here. You could do like a hot air balloon going up or maybe a party balloon. You could have the sun coming out from the clouds. So many possibilities. But I thought I would show a different option here where you have the entire card front panel pop up when you pull the tab. Let's look at the completed card so you know the direction we're headed in. Now this is cool because you could put anything you want on that panel and have it pop up to reveal anything you want behind it. I have a gift card back there as a surprise, but you could do another little scene or have your personal greeting there instead. This is a great overall design that you could use with other supplies you already have. This one's going to my friend's daughter who just turned 16. I'll start by creating that card panel front using a new happy birthday die from Lawn Fawn. It's the giant outlined happy birthday. They have a vertical and a horizontal, a portrait and a landscape, so you can pick and choose which you like. I'm going to use the landscape version. And if you're looking for other sentiments, they have lots of sentiments in this style. I've done a video with the style die before with a completely different technique. I'll link to that up here on the top right and at the end of this video. Now here I'm cutting a piece of Altenew double-sided adhesive to be the same size as this die. I cut the die from white cardstock. You can see it over to the left. And now I have another piece of white cardstock that I'm placing this double-sided adhesive onto. I will then remove the release paper from the adhesive and place our die cut on top. That means that all of the openings on this die cut will have adhesive exposed. So I'll be able to inlay little die cuts into it and we'll have a colorful smooth look. I'm pressing the die cut into the adhesive using the release paper so it doesn't stick to my fingers. Now I use that same die to cut from a bluish purple colored cardstock and I'm inlaying all of the letters for happy birthday. Very easy to do, they pop in like a puzzle piece and it sticks to that exposed adhesive. 
Next, I'll cut the same die from pink cardstock and I'll use the die cut pieces for a round happy birthday, filling those in, inlaying each of them. It doesn't take too long, maybe about 10 minutes to die cut and inlay all of these pieces. Then I used a magenta color cardstock for the little doodads kind of floating around the sentiment. I will then flip that over and press everything firmly with my bone folder so I know it's attached. And then we can trim the excess from the sides. Now we can create the interactive card por portion. I have a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm drawing a pencil line down the center. This time I'm doing a landscape or horizontal card. Last time I did a portrait or vertical card. Now I have the slit die. I will once again place that towards the kind of the center of the card, trying to line up with that pencil line I drew. I ran that through my die cut machine, and now we have our two slits. Next we have our tab. I'm using the straight edge of the ruler to start the fold along the long arm sticking out from the tab design. Once I have the fold started, I'll reinforce with my fingers and then really press that crease down using my bone folder. So now we have a fold line right along the center of the long arms. This is just like we did before. Next, I will fold away from myself on that other score line towards the top of the tab and reinforce that. Now we'll flip both of these pieces over. Again, I'm putting X's on them so you know it's the back side. I'll slide the long portion of the tab into the bottom slit of our card, and then the flap at the top into the top slit. I will then wiggle this through so that the small arms end up on the front of the panel and the long arms stay on the back of the panel. Same as before. Now back to the front. I'm going to slide that tab up so the top of the little arms are right up against the top of that top slit. So you can see it's lined up there. Again, putting a piece of tape there to hold it in that position. Here's a closer look. I think closer looks are always helpful when putting something together like this. Now we need that support tab. I'm folding one of the score lines towards me and one away from me. By the way, you can use whatever colors of cardstock you want for everything. Oftentimes I start with white because that's usually a great place to start and then you can add color as needed. After putting adhesive on the bottom of one of these flaps, I'll place it right onto my card panel, slightly above that top slit. So you can see that little flap is kind of pointing towards me, like the toes are pointing towards me and it's placed slightly above that top slit. Now I'll take this tape and I'm going to move it down so it's out of the way but still holding that tab in that position. Now that little flap sticking out here at the top, we'll put some strong adhesive on that and then we'll fold that down, keeping the adhesive facing up. See how it's facing up towards the camera? And make sure you got some good adhesive on there and then fold the flap below it right onto it. I'll place something heavy on this and give it some time to dry. All right, now I'm creating the panel that goes across the bottom of the card to hide our tab. I'm not gonna glue this down just yet. We're just creating it at this point. So I cut a piece of cardstock that is half the height of my card. So this is about two inches tall and five and a half inches wide. I am lining up that notch die on the bottom of this so that the little arrows line up with the side of the tab sticking out the bottom and the arms sticking out from the die line up with the bottom of our cardstock piece. Same process as before. I'll run that through my die cut machine and that will create a notch at the bottom of this white panel right at the bottom center. I'm also putting pencil lines where I want to apply that adhesive, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. First, let's cut off the excess of this tab here. This time I'm going to allow it to stick out a little bit from the bottom of the card so it's easier to grab. And I have my decorative tab that I need to glue on top. We first need to cut that short. I line up the bottom of this decorative de tab die cut with the bottom of our card panel, and then put a pencil line about halfway between the two slits and cut that shorter. Now I'll put strong adhesive on the back of this, liquid is best here, and then slide this into that bottom slit right above the pull tab feature. And then we will wiggle it so that this lines up onto the pull tab, lines up along the bottom, and gives it extra support and gives it that nice finished look with the little arrow at the bottom. Next up, I can place that half panel onto our card front where that little notch is. I'm again only putting liquid adhesive on those pencil lines that I've already put in place. So that's along the sides and along the bottom up to the notch. 
I'll place that right onto the bottom front of my card panel. And then we can add this entire piece onto a note card. So again, adhesive only goes along the top, the bottom, and the corners. You don't want to put any adhesive anywhere else on the back of this because it will hinder that pop-up movement. So just make sure you stick to the top, the bottom, and a little bit on the corners. This will get placed onto a note card of the same size, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Let's add our fun happy birthday panel onto the front. We'll put adhesive onto this little flap that's sticking up, and then we'll just press down the panel, making sure it's centered with the note card itself. Give it a little pressure there, a little bit of time to dry, and check this out. It po pops up beautifully when you pull that tab. So on the last example, I had a smaller element popping up. Here I have a bigger one. So really anything you want, you can put onto that pop-up feature. I thought it'd be fun to add a gift card underneath. So I'm putting a little temporary adhesive on the back of the gift card, something that could be easily removed. You could also use glue dots if you want. I then thought it'd be fun to use some playful images. These are new elephant stamp sets from Lawn Fawn. I just think they're so cute. You have the Elephant Parade add-on set on the left, and then the Elephant Parade stamp set itself on the right. There are coordinating dies available for both of these. Off screen, I stamped and colored some of the images and used the coordinating dies to cut them out. One of the reasons I like these big word backgrounds is you can add die cuts on top of it and still see the message. Now for the inside, I added a couple other die cuts and I just used temporary adhesive once again to add them in place so they could easily be removed. Here is a look at the completed card. It flattens to fit into a regular envelope and it kind of pops up a little bit on its own as soon as you take it out of the envelope. But then when you pull the tab, you get that huge pop up and a little turn towards the recipient. Now this is a good demonstration that you could put anything you want on that card panel and have it pop up. So this is a great die set to use with other supplies you have and that's why I'm showing it in a video. I did add some little uh, sequins here and there for a bit of sparkle. I'll link to those below. And you can see how I put a little pink die cut into the arrow there on the bottom so it stands out more against the white background. I really like the idea of putting a gift card in there, but you could also just hide an additional scene or maybe a personal message. Okay, I have one more of these pop-up type of cards for you, and it involves an element that has stitching on it. I love doing stitching on my cards. You've probably seen it in my videos in the past. And Lawn Fawn has some new stitching dies that allow you to do a simple stitched element pretty quickly. So here are the stitching dies. The embroidery hoop die set includes the heart on the left and the circle on the right. The heart one also cuts the embroidery hoop. Then there is a rainbow add-on die that is sold separately can, but can be used together. Now there is one more die in the basic set. You can see the picture of it on the right. There's a little screw die for the top of the embroidery hoop. I lost that die somehow. So I'm gonna have to make my own, but know that it does come with the set. Now I'm going to show you several cards that don't have the pop-up feature, but includes the stitching. And then we'll do one card that does have the pop-up feature. Then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a surprising way you can use these dies for non-stitching. So off screen, I die cut a bunch of these stitched die cuts, and then I did basic stitching. I'm not gonna show the stitching process in this video because this video is long enough as it is, and really is about that pop-up interactive card design. However, I do have a video that would be very helpful in how I did the stitching. I will link to it here on the top right, and I will link it in my video description below. I will say that these dies are great if you are a beginner stitcher on paper or if you're just looking for some faster elements to do stitching on, especially the rainbow. I love that one and the heart. So again, I will link to the supplies that I used and a video showing how to do this kind of stitching in my description below. But here I have my finished stitch pieces and I'm gluing an embroidery hoop on each. Now remember I lost the little die that creates that uh, little screw at the top of the embroidery hoop, so I had to make my own. I used the Lawn Fawn fishtail banner dies, you can see them on the right, and I cut the ends off. See how the ends of those dies have a long thin piece? I cut that from silver cardstock, 
cut that long thin piece and glued it behind the top of the embroidery hoop. So I just have this thin strip of silver cardstock. And then I will glue a silver gem on the end to kind of mimic the look of a screw there at the top. I honestly misplace things on my desk all the time, so sometimes you just gotta kinda wing it, but I'm sure I'll find the die when I finally clean up. Now let's start first with the cards that do not have the pop-up feature, just to show you what they look like. On the back of my non-pop-up cards, I use this heart quilt background die from Lawn Fawn. I do believe they have a portrait and landscape of this also. I cut that from white cardstock, and I'm gluing that onto a white note card four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So this is just a little bit of a tone on tone background. I then am putting foam tape on the back of my little stitch tube and I'll add that towards the top center of the card. Now for this rainbow I thought it'd be fun to add some little clouds. So I'm using that die set that you see there on the right. It's meant to go with a platform pop-up card I'll link to a video that appear on the top right that shows that type of interactive card. But I'm just using the clouds here to add a little something to the bottom of that rainbow. And I did stamp hello on one of those clouds. That hello is from one of these stamp sets. We, here we have the Lawn Fawn button add-on stamp set on the left. And then we have the Lawn Fawn So Very Mice stamp set on the right, which the hello is from. These work really well with the stitch die, so you can have some playful sentiments to go with it. But I also used the You Are So Amazing from the set on the right for the inside of each of these cards. So here's this first completed one. Again, I did that sentiment on the inside, which really ties in nicely with the stitching on the front. This is a very simple stitching that goes very quickly or is good for beginners. Again, check out that video to see how to, to do this type of back stitch on a rainbow. I used a size three pearl cotton from DMC. I'll link to that below, but you could use the six ply DMC that I often use in stitching and keep all six plies together. That'll give you nice kind of fluffy looking stitching that I have here. For the rest of my stitch cards without the pop-up feature, I actually skipped a sentiment on the front. I just felt this looked really cool as is without a sentiment. I rarely leave a sentiment off the front, but it just looks so nice on display. And then I can put the you are so amazing on the inside. Now this one is definitely my favorite of them. I like that rainbow on the heart. So I ordered more of each of those colors so I could make more off screen. I just did a basic cross stitch on those hearts. The video up here on the top right will explain that. And here's a little tip. You can get all the stitching done on this heart while watching one or two of your favorite episodes on TV. I watched a Law and Order and was able to get it done. And then this one is for one of my guy friends who does a lot of quilting. I thought he would appreciate that stitching. And it just shows you how changing up the colors really changes up the look of the card. Okay, now for the pop-up stitch card. So we're going to incorporate that pop-up interactive feature along with the stitched element. To save time in this video, I am skipped ahead in the process of pulling the interactive card together. It is the exact same process we did on the first card in this video. So I'm at the stage here where I'm gluing that little support on slightly above that little slit on the top of our card. And we're gonna pick up at this point. Again, everything up to here is just like I did on the first example. All right, so I'm putting adhesive on that little flap. I'll fold this down. That little flap with adhesive will be facing up. I'll fold the big flap onto it, and then we will put something heavy on it while it dries. Off screen, I cut the tab to be slightly longer than my card panel, and I put the decorative piece on top, just like I did on the first card. And then I added the little pink arrow inside. To glue this on the card base, I'm putting adhesive along the top, in the top corners and along the bottom in the bottom corners, but nowhere else, and adding that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Now we need the panel for the bottom front of our card to cover up the tab. I know I want my stitch hoop to sit about there, and I want my white cardstock that's on the bottom to come up to about halfway there, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm just eyeballing it. So I'm holding it there. I'll put a little mark at the bottom of the card panel, and then I will trim this shorter. So now I have this white piece that's four and a quarter inches wide, and it stops about halfway between those two card slits. Now we do need to do that little notch on the bottom so that you can easily pull. 
So I'm putting the cardstock slightly up, centered on my card. Put that notch die right along the bottom, as we've done many times. Run that through our die cut machine. Now we can put adhesive on the back of this, only on the sides and on the bottom right up to the notch. For my first card example, I had used a cloud border die along the top of this panel. This time it's just cut straight, and I kind of wanted to hide that a bit. So I cut three cardstock strips, and I'm gluing those right around the top edge of that white piece we glued down. You don't have to do this, but this just adds a little interesting element, and it kind of hides where that panel stopped. Now I'm only putting glue along the sides here. I don't want this to be too firm in here because it might hinder the movement. So I just put light glue on the edges. Then I will just trim off the excess. I learned my lesson and this time I'm stamping the sentiment that will be hidden under the pop-up feature before I glue on the pop-up feature. So right underneath those cardstock strips, I'm stamping one of the sentiments from the stitching stamp sets I showed you earlier. And now I can glue my stitched element onto the flap of our pop-up feature. So I'm just lining it right on there and I'm adding that little silver gem to that top element that I had to create because I lost that little die. By the way, that thanks is from one of the mice stamp set that I showed you earlier. So now on this one, when you pull the tab, that little embroidery hoop pops up and reveals another stamped message inside. So this is a proof that you can use a variety of products along with this interactive card feature. I know that investing in a die set for an interactive type of card is an investment, right? So you want to make sure you have multiple ways you can use it. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you today. This kind of goes back to that tip that I've shared many times in videos to try to think of five ways to use a product before you invest in it. Now, before we go, I did want to show you one bonus idea. If you like the look of like these rainbows and hearts, but you don't like to stitch, here's another thing you can do. This is really therapeutic also. In this case, I used that rainbow stitching die. I glued it onto a solid white circle die cut. And on each of the open dots, instead of stitching, I'm gluing a little pearl. You could use gems, pearls, whatever you want. This reminds me of that diamond painting that's very popular right now. My daughter was sick last week and she did a bunch of diamond painting. Said it's very therapeutic and so I thought I'd try it with this. So I'm just using the dots as a pattern to follow for placing each of these small gemstones. I didn't get a chance to finish up a card with this, but I'll just add it to a simple card later on and stamp a message below it. But here is the final result after putting on the colorful gems. Just another way to stretch your supplies. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're interested in anything I used today, I have it linked below in my YouTube description. At the end, I will link to a couple other videos of interactive cards that you might like. I appreciate you spending this time with me. Head over to my blog if you want to bookmark any of these card ideas, and I'll see you soon with another video.